Sometimes you get weird shit from the people you care about, and sometimes you kinda asked for it. I'm always a fan of finding PlayStation 2 games I've never heard of, because even though I can't say I've heard of most of them, I've heard of a fair amount. And uh, sometimes people come to me with PS2 games that are incredibly weird, and I'm like, oh yeah, I've heard of that. But this is, this is new to me. I did not know the National Rifle Association made a video game on the PS2, because that just seems so bizarre. And a friend bought it for me and shipped it to me, and that, that's why we're playing it right now. Now, my expectations for the game weren't incredibly high, but it's also not like the free cereal box CD quality kind of game that most people made it out to be. It functions, it's below average, but it does what it wants to do, and I'm not sure what else people expected. The idea behind the game is that you play with realistically modeled guns with realistic sounds and you, you know, shoot at uh, harmless targets in shooting courses as you would in real life. It, it tries hard to create an atmosphere for a hobby that I don't participate in, so I don't exactly know how well it does. But aside from the incredibly poor texture quality, I could see these being real places and I know there are real courses like this. From a gameplay standpoint, it functions fine. It's score-based, you always have a timer, there are four separate game modes. Perhaps the biggest difference between gl uh, Gun Club and other FPSs is that Gun Club's aiming is a bit different. Don't get me wrong, the controls for the aiming are about as normal as any other FPS, but the thing is that the aiming itself is different because of the way the character breathes. They're trying to realistically simulate breathing and how it affects your aiming. And I don't know how realistic it is, but it is true that you have to get in synergy with your character's breathing if you want to aim properly. So that takes getting used to, and it's a detail I personally appreciated because it made the game stand out slightly more from other FPSs, even though it is a gallery shooter. So yeah, I can't say this game is average, and I can't say it's offensively bad either. It has some high points that are outweighed by just how uh, not entertaining it is. But we're going to be playing through it anyway, all four game modes. On their highest difficulty, because this game does a weird thing that I don't appreciate. Uh, there, are two, there are two main modes of play. Each contains the four smaller game modes. There's certification mode where you have to get a passing score on the four game modes, and it's artificially extended by making you play the easier versions of each course and then make your way up to the harder versions, which also contain the easier versions within them. So it's the definition of padding. We're just going to do quick matches and play the hardest version of each game mode because that's, that's the one that you should care about. So yeah, let's uh, let's get this weird budget National Rifle Association Gun Club video game started, I guess. The first thing you may notice about Gun Club is that there are no sounds in the menu at all. This was shocking to me and I thought perhaps there was something wrong with the disc or with my PlayStation, but no, there are just no sounds in the menu. There's no music, there's no sound for selecting anything. Oh, by the way, uh, these guns all have descriptions based on their real-life counterparts. That's cool, I guess, but you really just want the guns that fire and reload the quickest, because these are time trials. The first game mode we're going to be looking at is plinking, where, you know, you shoot small plinky targets with your guns, and we're going to be doing multi-gun, which means that we switch between guns as we go through the courses. We start out with a pistol, we move to a rifle, and then we go to a shotgun. And each one has their own challenges. The weird thing about this game is that even though it does what it wants to do, I'm really not sure who it's for. Is it for people interested in guns who don't own real ones yet, and want to know what they're like? Because if so, then it's a little weird about that because even though the aiming is different from normal FPS's, you don't get a reticle in real life like you do here. Alright, so let's get the plinking game started. The cans are worth 10 points each. You want to shoot the higher cans first because if the stack topples, you lose all the points from the toppled cans. You have to shoot the cans individually to get the points they're worth. 
fair bit of design. Test your aiming skills with this weird aiming system where you have to pay attention to the character's breathing. It works. Uh, if I'm making it look easy here, that's because I practiced this game for a good four hours before recording it. Just so I could get used to the weird aiming. You may consider that a negative thing, but since it's like an intended part of the experience, I think it's fine. The pistol course also has a special balloon target that appears after you hit all the plates. After you knock out all four pa uh, plates, a balloon target appears in the upper right corner, which is worth 10 points instead of 5, while the plates are only worth 5. Uh, the aiming is fairly accurate as long as you're shooting at something that's in the middle of the reticle you're going to hit it. The courses often consist of strings, which means you do the same thing more than once and your score gets added together. I guess that's fine. You know, the game's only an hour long. I guess I took a long time to be able to finish it. But it's only an hour long if, you, uh, if you're used to the aiming system. I don't think it's normal. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't think it's... What's the word? I don't think it's realistic. To ask a normal people to uh, to spend as long as I have getting used to the game's aiming system just to play a fairly average gallery shooter. But I want you to know that what I'm doing right here is not as easy as it looks, and the other later game modes are especially not as easy as I'm going to make them look. This game requires a surprising amount of practice, practice you might want to use getting used to real guns instead. But this game was gifted to me by a friend who spent real money on this and then paid for postage to send it to me. So I spent, I sat down, you know, one night and spent like four hours practicing it so that way I could be good enough at it to play it. So I hope he watches this and appreciates this. These bottles at the bottom that we can shoot with our rifle, they're worth 10 points so we want to get them first. We ideally uh, want to also not miss so many damn times. As far as I know, what I'm doing right here is the only full playthrough of this game available on the internet, which is not a surprise because this game does not exactly have the best reputation and it's not like it was well known to start with. Just like before, after we shoot all of these plate targets, an, an, uh, shoot, an extra balloon target will appear that's worth 10 points instead of 5. Now we can shoot these targets without zooming in, or, or aiming as the game calls it. And there is a game mode later where we will want to shoot targets without zooming in, otherwise it will make things much harder for us than they need to be. It's also faster to shoot the targets without aiming first, assuming you can pull it off. Five seconds. Out of time. So a thing about this game is that it boasts on the back of its case that it's a first-person shooter without violence or blood of any kind, which is true, but it's still rated E10 for mild violence. So according to the ESRB, uh, guns are inherently violent. So even though this game was clearly made to combat the idea that guns are inherently violent, the ESRB disagrees. And I have to wonder, at what point is your artistic statement less valuable than getting an ESRB rating? I'm not saying I agree with the NRA by any means, and some of the NRA's statements lately about video games have been incredibly stupid and misinformed. But if you're going to make a game that you, that you want to show people is not about being violent, and the ratings company rates it as violent, Maybe you should just make it for PC or something instead, especially since the developer has way more experience with PC games. Out of time. All right, here's the long range plinking course, and this one has the most going on. The bottles at the bottom are worth 10 points. The cans are worth 10 points. And there are really, really small orange targets at the top. The top left and top right that are also worth 10 points. The smallest orange targets, mind you. Not the bigger ones. We can also shoot the plates in the middle to make a balloon target appear. Just as before. But if you're good enough, using the orange targets the whole time is ideal. 
because you get 10 points each time you hit one of those orange targets, and you can just switch between hitting the two smallest orange targets over and over for maximum score, assuming you don't miss. Uh, for future videos, I am going to include music while I'm doing the shooting. The game does not have any music of any kind. It does have apparently realistic gun sounds that change depending on which gun you're using, which I've noticed. And there are perfectly valid reasons for them to want to not include music, so I'm not going to make fun of the game for not including music, since, you know, that's a perfectly valid artistic choice for a game like this, which is trying to mimic a very specific hobby in as faithful a way as it can while still being playable as a video game. But I'm going to edit music into these videos, so that way you're not just listening to the gun sounds and me talking over the gun sounds the whole time. You might think it's depressing to play this game for so long without listening to music, but I have a very high tolerance level for video games, very large amount of patience. So whenever I get angry about any sort of video game, I want you to remember that. Just remember NRA Gun Club, whenever that happens. You know, you're seeing this game, this game probably doesn't get off very good impressions, but I've already said a lot of good things about it, and I'm trying to take it seriously. I managed to take it seriously when I played it, and I think I'm taking it fairly seriously with my commentary right now. Out of time. I'd say the game is below average even though it mostly does what it wants to do because of a mechanic that doesn't work that we haven't discussed yet, and also the lack of entertainment value for any, you know, person that's not me. This game uh, requires a lot of practice in order to get used to how the shooting works, and most people would probably just play the game for 20 minutes and then never play it again. And I don't know if I can really blame them for that, because there's very little hook, very little incentive to get you into playing more. But I do absolutely want you to understand, without a doubt, this is not like those shitty shooting gallery games that get released on, uh, on internet stores today that have no effort put into them and are just incredibly bland and have no artistic value. This game is at least trying, and the aiming system requires getting used to. It functions, it's challenging, it works as a score attack game. You know, it, it works, and it's more than bare minimum effort. And I'm honestly not sure what else you'd want or expect from a game like this. Like, yeah, some of the decisions may seem like, you know, you're just asking for people to call your game boring and terrible. Like, the lack of music and the lack of menu sounds that just, uh, probably makes you feel... Makes you feel a pretty bad first impression. But this game was made with good intentions, and it works. It functions technically. I also find the environments quite nice as someone who actually lives in the country. These environments are fairly realistic even if the texture quality isn't so great and the graphics are subpar for the time period. You know, these look like real places. I can say that as someone who lives in the country. I could realistically see this being some place where I could go to. Alright, it's time for the final planking course, and this one probably has the least to it. All of the targets are worth roughly the same amount of points, I think all of them are actually worth 5 points. And we just want to shoot these 5 targets in the middle here, these ones with the bodies. And we want to shoot them right in the center over and over until time runs out. It's definitely the most simple of the planking games. There's really no benefit to shooting any of the other targets besides these ones in the middle here. But you'll notice that the shotgun has an easier time hitting things than the pistol or rifle. Not by a lot, mind you. This is not a traditional video game shotgun by any means. But the aiming on this thing is slightly more forgiving than for other guns. I was a little curious why I never heard of the developer of this game before. The developer of this game is Jarhead Games. But the reason I've never heard of them before is because they mostly made PC shooting games. You know, military-based PC shooting games. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that's not the kind of thing I play. 
And you might be thinking to yourself, well, playable passion, this isn't the kind of thing you'd play either, but I'm playing it right now, so you're wrong. And even though a friend did gift it to me, that's not the reason we're playing it. I, we're playing it right now because I actually do give a shit about it. If the game did not have sufficient commentary, uh... Sorry, if the game did not have sufficient design for me to make commentary, or it didn't inspire me to talk over it, I would not be talking over it right now. So, you know, I wasn't... I wasn't forced into this by societal conventions or anything. I actually wanted to make a Let's Play of this. As strange as that sounds, I do think this game is worth sharing with people. Especially since you know no one else is going to do it. And unlike some other things no one else has shared, this isn't god-awful. This is not another Sid the Dummy situation, thankfully. I'm not sure how many of those I can take.